Hello, my name is Damiano. Today we are going to build together the Collab Robotic Arm Kit that can perform a gripping motion. Here are all the tools that we will need. The box the kit came with, some clear wire, a button, a breadboard, a barrel jack, a DC wall adapter, a servo trigger, a servo, screwdriver pen, a male-to-male -male jumper wire and a male-to-female jumper wire. We also need a pair of scissors, which doesn't come with the box. So let's think for a second, what does a hand do? The human hand is a complex machine made up of skin, muscles, bones, nerves, and it allows us to grip items in many ways and with many different types of power. Think, for example, the difference when you're holding a pen versus when you're holding a heavy bag, right? Hands are really difficult and because they do so many things, we will focus on one thing today, the gripping motion. To do this, we will use the cardboard box to build a simple hand, connect it to the servo, our motor, and then create a circuit to bring the power to the servo motor and move the hand. Let's start with our how-to. Let's start with the box. This will become our hand, and to do this, start with the box opening facing towards you. The first thing that we need to do is to clear out the top of the box. The top of your box will probably have some flaps around, so we need to make sure to cut them out, like I'm doing now, and I'm just going to remove the first one. Take your time, the cardboard could be a bit thick, but with a bit of patience, you should be able to get your lid nice and tidy, just like that. Now, on the left side of the lid, we need to create the space for our servo, our motor. And a good rule of thumb here is to use the servo to decide how big the incision has to be. I like to trace the outline with the little screwdriver to have a guideline. And that with my scissors, I take my time and I cut it out. Here I'm doing a little test to see if it actually fits. And it may take a test or two and don't worry, it's okay if it takes a bit of time. The idea is for the servo to sit on top of the lid so that the bottom wire can connect inside of the box. So in this case, I'm opening up just a little bit more to make a bit more space so that the servo can sit comfortably on the side of the box. On the right side of our box, we need to create the fingers for our hand. And in our case, we can create three fingers we can just cut uh, some small rectangles out of the right side so that we are left with three fingers. Now we need to create some little holes on, in our fingers in order to connect the wire that will actually move them. So using the thinnest tip of the screwdriver, I recommend opening the lid and just piercing at the top of the finger, just a tiny little hole enough to let the clear wire pass through later. The next thing we need to do is to bend them, just like normal fingers. We will do three folds in our case. One at the top, one where they connect to the rest of the hand, and a third fold a little bit before the fingers to simulate how the hands fold. So this could be one, this is the second, and that's the third finger, so first bend, done. Now we bend them where they connect to the box. Very good. And to do the third one, we actually need to extend the cut just a little bit. So using the scissors, I will cut through just a little bit more. And this will allow us to do a third fold of the whole hand. Look at this, perfect. Looks like a hand ready. Now it's time to connect them with the wire. There is a very easy measure for the wire, which is one and a half length of the box. 
And this is a very easy way to measure it together with me. So we put one side of the wire at the beginning of the box on the top, we run it all around the box on the other side, and then we cut it halfway through the back. This will give us one and a half length of the box. Nice and easy. Now we need three wires because we have three fingers and an easy tip to save a bit of time instead of measuring all the time is to use the first wire to measure the other two. So here's my second wire, cutting that out, and the third one for the third finger, of course, we use the same little trick. And cut. Perfect. Now we have the three clear wires for our fingers and we can start connecting them. What we need to do is to run the wires from the top into each one of the little holes and tie them with a little knot underneath the lid. Just like this. We turn it over and then we tie them up. I suggest doing a double knot just to make sure that the wire stays nice and safe. Don't worry if the clear wire is a bit hard to bend to do the knot. It took me a little bit of practice, so make sure to take your time. That should do. Perfect. So now we have our three wires and you can see how they will eventually connect on the other side where the servo will be. But for now, the hand is done and we can move forward to the next part of our build, which is the circuit. What is a circuit? Normally every circuit is a closed loop of electricity that can travel around and every circuit at least has a power source. In our case, we have a wall adapter. In our case, this will connect to a barrel jack and then we have a load, that's what's being powered for us, is going to be the servo. And then a circuit path, which is the actual path where the current will flow. In our case, because we use a, a wall adapter, we want to make sure that this is the very last step. So for the time being, let's leave the wall adapter on the side and let's focus on preparing the barrel jack. The barrel jack will bring the current into our breadboard, so we need to prepare it and connect it using jumper wires into the breadboard. To do this, we'll need to use the two jumper wires with male-to-male -male connection. The male connection is the one with the metal pin sticking out. You can choose any color of jumper wires you want. In my case, I will use the traditional ones of electronics, so red for positive and black for negative. If you look closely at the barrel jack on the plastic side, you will notice a plus and a minus. This indicates which part is the negative and the positive. So for me, the red wire is the positive, so I will slide it into the positive end. Nice and snug, carefully. And the black wire, the negative one, will connect on the negative side of the barrel jack. Then we will connect the two wires into the power rail of our breadboard on the right side. You can see we have a red line for positive, that's where we put our cable, and a black line for the negative, and that's how we connect it. This will bring power all through the breadboard. In the breadboard you see we have on each side two columns of holes that have two colors on the side. One is red and one is black. These are called power rails. Each hole is connected to each other, so if power is connected to one hole in the column, it will also be connected to all other holes in the column. So this will allow us to bring the current across the breadboard. A fun fact, breadboard is called breadboard because in the past, when people didn't have all the nice tools that we have today, they actually used the breadboards where they used to make sandwich to design circuits. 
But now let's build our motor. This is what will move our hand, the servo. In order to do this, to build our muscle, we need four parts. So here's how this is going to work. We have a button, we have two jumper wires that will connect into the servo trigger. This is like the brain of our hand. What will actually tell the motor, our servo, when to move and how to move. So in our case, we will then build all of this circuit on top of the breadboard. And let's start with taking a closer look at, at the servo trigger. So you see that we have two sides. On one side we have two pins, and on the other side we have two sets of pins. So the two pins that are just alone on one side will connect to the breadboard for power, while on the other side we have two sets of pins. The one with only two pins will connect to the button using the jumper wires while the three pins will connect to the servo, so our engine. So this is actually the right way to show you how this is going to be connected. So in order to connect our servo trigger, we need to understand how the connection in the brand board works. You see that there are columns of numbers and letters. So when I'll tell you to connect something to, for example, D10 or F10, you need to find the letter D and the number 10. It's a bit like playing battle cruiser. So let's start with our servo trigger. Let's find the side that has only two pins and let's connect them to the breadboard. What we need to find is the GND pin. This will have to go on the black power rail on the right side, just like that. It should fit quite easily onto the breadboard. Now, the next step is to connect our button. Our button has four pins underneath. What we need to do is to find D10 and D12 to align the button. On the right side, G10 and G12. So, like playing Battle Cruiser, we find the right spot and then we gently press the button in place. Now, we need to connect the button to the servo board, and this is where the jumper wires will help us. Again, you can choose any color you want, but for me today, I will use the blue one. You see there are two parts. The plastic part is the female, and the one with the metal pin pointing out is called the male side. So we will start with the female side and connect it to the in pin in our servo trigger. Our cable from in will connect to C10 right next to the top left side of the button. Then our second wire, the female side will connect to GND in the servo trigger and the male side will connect with H12 on the right bottom side of our button. Now the last bit is to connect the engine the servo to the servo trigger. To do this, we just need to make sure that the GND pin on the servo trigger aligns with the black wire from the servo. And once you find this, you just need to slide the three pin connector in place. And voila, this is our circuit complete. Now, the next thing that we need to do is, of course, to test it. And to do that, we will need power. <laughs> so let's put our wall adapter into our power socket and let's connect the power to the barrel jack. Everything seems ready, so let's start. And oh, look at that. The servo is actually moving. And if we click the button, the direction should change. One important thing that you can also play with are the A and B knobs on the servo trigger. And these are called potentiometers. And you can actually use the little uh, pen screwdriver to play around with speed and with the orientation. Once you're ready, we can put the board into the box. 
and we just need to make sure that we can fit the servo trigger in the little opening we carved out before. And the last thing we have to do is to connect the wires of the fingers onto the servo. Now, my suggestion in this case is to thread them from underneath upwards and to tie the knot on top. This will help you to actually wrap the wire around the servo, so it will actually work better. Now we're actually ready to test, so let's fish out our barrel jack. Let's connect it to the power. So you see that because we thread the wires from underneath, as the servo turns, the wire spins around the center and it actually closes the fingers. And if we click the button, we actually see that the turning direction changes and the hand opens again, which is pretty impressive, right? Oh, that looks fantastic. So well done and congratulations. Thank you for building this kit with us and we hope you have a lot of fun.